Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a budget AV receiver shootout for you where we're going to be comparing the Yamaha RX V6A and the Onkyo TX NR595 head to head, and we'll get into it right after the intro. All right, so before we get started, we think it's really important to mention that what we say in this video is our subjective opinion, and you may or may not agree with us, and that's completely fine. Everyone has their own likes and dislikes, and this is just our take on these two models. With that said, let's start off by taking a look at both of these receivers. Starting on the left is the Yamaha, and as you can see, it's quite a unique looking design. And as I mentioned in the full review of this receiver, at first I really didn't care for the way it looked. But the more I got used to it, the more I appreciated it. Moving on to the Onkyo, as you can see, it's more of a traditional design that we're used to seeing on other AVRs. And as I mentioned in the review of this receiver, we feel Onkyo did a great job making the plastic front panel look like real brushed aluminum. And we also really like the layout of the buttons and just the overall looks of the front of the Onkyo. And for that reason, we think that the Onkyo beats the Yamaha in the looks department. Next, let's move around to the back of these receivers. Starting with the HDMI ports, the Yamaha gives you seven inputs and one output, while the Onkyo gives you six inputs and two outputs. The biggest difference here is the HDMI version that comes with the receiver. The Yamaha has the most current HDMI 2.1 standard, which will give you up to 8K at 60 frames per second, VRR, ALLM, and a lot of other features with a firmware update. On the other hand, the Onkyo only has HDMI 2.0, which means it won't be getting any new gaming features, and is only going to be good for signals up to 4K at 60 Hz. Now, if you're only going to be watching movies uh, on your receiver, the HDMI 2.1 standard might not be that important for you. But the Yamaha is the clear winner here because it's using the most current version of HDMI. That is as long as they follow through with all of the promised updates. As far as speaker connections go, they're both pretty similar. Either of these receivers are capable of running up to a 5.2.2 Dolby Atmos setup, and the connectors seem to be spaced an equal distance apart on both units. The pre-outs on these two units are pretty much the same as well, but the Yamaha does have an upper hand here with separate pre-outs for the front, left, and right channels, as well as Zone 2. The Onkyo, on the other hand, merges these pre-outs into a single set of RCAs that you have to set up manually. Other than that, these both have dual subwoofer outputs that use the same mono signal. For the rest of the I.O., the Onkyo beats the Yamaha by having an extra pair of analog RCA inputs, but that's pretty much the only difference. Both of these receivers also have USB ports for updating firmware and playing music, but the Yamaha has it on the front and the Onkyo has it in the back. As far as build quality goes, both of these receivers are about what you would expect to get at this price point, with mainly plastic and steel construction. They both feel sturdy enough, so you're not going to have to worry about them falling apart anytime soon. And I think it's important to mention here that the Onkyo weighs about 5 pounds or 2 kilos more than the Yamaha. And that leads us into the next part of our comparison, amplification and power ratings. The Yamaha is rated to deliver 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms, while the Onkyo is rated to push 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Now, it might seem like the Yamaha clearly has an advantage in this regard, but more watts doesn't always equate to better sound, and we'll elaborate on this a little more when we get into the sound quality of these receivers. But for now, we're going to talk about the user interface. Starting with the Yamaha, the UI seemed well laid out and functional, although for such a new receiver, it did seem to be a bit dated. But we still felt like it was very good. That is, until we saw the interface included with the Onkyo. In our opinion, the Onkyo literally destroys the Yamaha in this category. The Yamaha uses pretty much a text-based setup, where the Onkyo uses high-resolution text and graphics to help guide the user through the setup process. And, speaking of resolution, another thing that sets these two receivers apart is the upscaling of 1080p content to 4K. 
Both of these receivers did a fine job at this, but the Yamaha clearly came out ahead, producing more vibrant colors and an overall better pitcher quality. Although we think the Yamaha clearly won this category, the Ankyo still produced a really nice pitcher, and of course watching 4K Blu-rays, we saw no difference because they're just passing through the signal. Alright, so next we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of people who are buying new AV receivers are interested in, and that's auto room correction that's built into both of these receivers. The Yamaha comes equipped with what they refer to as YPOW, and the Ankyo comes with their own AccuEQ software. Now our view on room correction software is that they are capable of doing a pretty good job figuring out speaker distances and sometimes they can even get the crossover set right. But in our experiences of using these auto room correction softwares in the past, they do make mistakes. So it's always recommended to go through and make sure the settings are correct. And in our opinion, by the time you do this, you could have just set up the receiver manually. Besides these issues, they almost never get the sound right. Even if they come close, you're still going to have to go back and tweak the settings to your personal preference. The main problem with these room correction softwares, in our opinion, is the very cheap microphone that comes with the receivers. These probably don't cost the manufacturers more than a dollar to make, and you're completely relying on them to set up the sound in your room properly. So no matter how good the software is, and no matter how good your speakers are, the weak link is always going to be the cheap microphone. And if you think about it, when a professional comes to calibrate a room, he's using thousands of dollars worth of equipment and some of the best microphones available for this type of calibration. So for this reason, we don't use the room correction software built into receivers or processors. We set up everything manually from measuring the distance of the speakers, setting the crossovers, and using a decibel meter to set speaker levels. Then we fine tune the system by adjusting the built in EQs if they're available. We found that this is the best way to get the results that we're satisfied with. Now, you may not agree with us, and maybe you've had great success with room correction software. And if you had, that's great. This is just our take on the whole room correction issue. Also, one thing to keep in mind is we're talking about entry level receivers here. Some of your higher end receivers and processors actually come with very capable microphones and more sophisticated softwares that seem to do a much better job. But in the end, we still prefer to do it manually. The last thing we want to go over here is the sound quality of these receivers. And while they both sounded good for entry level receivers, there are slight differences between the two. Starting with the Yamaha in our reviews, we were really impressed with the fidelity of the sound. It wasn't until we tested the Ankyo side by side with the Yamaha that we actually noticed two things that set them apart. The first thing was the clarity of the center channel. Although the Yamaha was quite good, the Ankyo sounded even better with slightly clear dialogue and a more forward presentation. The next thing we noticed was that the Ankyo seemed to produce a slightly deeper, tighter bass response in our setup. We're not sure why this is, but we suspect it's because of the bigger transformer in the Ankyo, which could be part of the reason why the Ankyo weighs 5 pounds more than the Yamaha. Now, don't get us wrong, both of these receivers sounded very good at this price point, and we were very impressed with the way the Yamaha sounded, but that's why these side-by-side -side comparisons are so great, because they allow you to pick up on subtle differences between products that you wouldn't normally have discovered if you only bought one. So in our opinion, the Ankyo wins a slim victory in the sound department. And of course, that's our opinion. Everybody's different, and that's why we always recommend auditioning audio equipment for yourself. As far as the price of these receivers, Costco sells them both for around $400, unless they go on sale. And then it's possible to get them for around $330, as we did with the Yamaha. Okay guys, I guess it's time for us to let you know which one of these receivers we're going to be keeping. And I have to say right up front that this was a really tough decision. It would be great if I could somehow combine the best parts of these receivers together, but unfortunately that's not an option. So after many agonizing hours of contemplation over these receivers, I decided the only way I could ever get a good night's sleep again was just to return them both. Now hold on, wait a minute, before you click away, I'm just kidding. 
we actually have made a decision and th it was a really hard decision to make, but we decided that we're going to be keeping the Onkyo. Now I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are thinking that we're making a mistake. But in the end, you have to make the decision based on features that you're looking for. Of course, I would love to have the HDMI 2.1 capabilities of the Yamaha, and I may end up regretting this decision in the future. But for now, I'm going to live with the Onkyo. But if you're in the same boat as us, and you're trying to make the same decision yourself, we don't think you could go wrong with either one of these receivers. And if you're interested in seeing the individual reviews of each one of these receivers, We'll leave links down in the description below. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it, and let us know down in the comments below if you think we made the right or wrong decision. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.